underpins so much of what we do in this digital era and not just AI, right? So how is Gen AI era different in terms of harnessing the data compared to, you know, the earlier sort yeah. of internet era? Yeah, you know, it's interesting with the advent of generative AI, um, we're actually creating data. And that's completely different from where we were previously with other AI technologies like predictive AI, where we're reasoning over information and reasoning over data. But with generative AI, we're actually creating data from other information mm. that's within an organization. And so I think the big thing with that is, you know, what are we actually training the models on? Uh, so as organizations are thinking about how they might be using Gen AI within their firm, they need to be thinking about what is the information that they're using to train those models if it's something specific to that company. Mm. So think about ChatGPT, everyone's uh, favorite example of generative AI. You don't need to give it any information to be able to get some results out of that. That's where it really starts, and it moves up a continuum of using external data to switching into using your own internal information to train models, your own internal intellectual property. And what we're finding is that earlier on, you're able to get a lot of efficiency gains through AI by using different technologies trained by external data. But as you move up the model, you can start influencing business metrics with AI because you're using your own internal information to train those models and use that information to come up with predictions, insights, and actions for an organization. Yeah, that's the whole idea is that the more sophisticated the organization becomes with respect to how they manage their information and how they leverage AI, the, uh, the ability to actually create a closed looped environment where the predictions are then learning from the outcomes mm. that actually happen in the real world makes it even better. And so that's the whole point is that if we can go ahead and say, uh, let's, you know, for example, perhaps we'll have a prediction around uh, winning an opportunity. And if we do certain things, we might have a higher chance of winning. Well, uh, if we do those things and then we win the opportunity, we're getting more information back into the model. So it's this closed looped mm. environment that really brings us towards excellence in terms of how we adopt AI. So it's not just internal and external data, but it's also moving the organization from using static data to a more dynamic use exactly. of data in real time. Exactly. So if I have an a action that's presented to me and I take that action, um, once I go and express the reality of that action, was it good? Was it actually the correct action to take? And that's what's getting fed back into uh, some of that information to make it more accurate, more predictive for the future. Um, so your um, maturity model talks uh, addresses the availability, accessibility of data, uh, and you also talk about the culture change. Now, specifically within that culture change, um, what are the sort of uh, dimensions that are relevant yeah, you know, it, uh, culture, uh, there's, a, there's a great quote, uh, you know, culture eats strategy for breakfast, right? So the power of cultural change is, is huge. And uh, there's a few different components of that. One of them is, uh, you know, a culture of being able to have, uh, you know, that governance. So really good, clean data, data that's structured. That's less about technology and that's more about the processes that surround the technology in the business. So that's one side of it. And then the other side of it is really uh, about how an organization thinks about resourcing and training its people for AI. And so that's really more about uh, the skill sets that the individuals have within the business because that's where they're going to be able to identify new use cases for AI within the business. 